I remove a hydrogen ion from an acid, um, especially if we were looking at that weak base situation, let's say if I add a hydrogen ion to the weak base, I then end up making an acid, right? So Bronsted Lowry acids and bases are set up so that when an acid donates its proton, it becomes a base. So let's take a look. I've got this strong acid, HCl, here. And when it loses, it's going to donate its hydrogen to water. And when it loses that hydrogen, it now becomes a chloride ion that's capable of accepting a proton. So what do we have here? We call this system conjugate acid-base pairs. So for every reaction, there's always an acid and a base that the acid donates the proton, becoming a base and the base accepts the proton, becoming an acid. So let's take a look at what happens here. We have HCl is an acid. It's donating its proton to the water, which act, is acting as the base in this situation. Once hydrochloric acid loses its proton, it now becomes what we call the conjugate base of HCl. Notice that water, once it gains a hydrogen, becomes a base. I'm sorry. Water, once it gains its hydrogen, becomes an acid and can donate. Um, it can donate that proton back to the chloride ion. So, for this situation, we have two acid-base pairs, or conjugate acid-base pairs. We've got HCl, Cl minus, and we've got H2O and H3O plus. So these are two conjugate acid-base pairs. Notice that there's two for every reaction. Let's take a look at another reaction. We've got here, what we call a weak acid, one in which it does not dissociate completely when we put it in water. If you remember electrolytes, where you have a substance, when you put it in water, it dissolves into ions. Well, strong acids are considered strong electrolytes, whereas weak acids are weak electrolytes. So hydrogen phosphate or phosphoric acid, when it donates its <clears throat> when it donates its hydrogen to water it loses that hydrogen and it becomes its conjugate base here we have our acid once water accepts that hydrogen it now becomes conjugate acid while water was the base. So what are the two conjugate acid-base pairs here? We've got H3PO4, H2PO4 minus, and once again, we've got H2O and H3O plus. In case you haven't noticed, water can act as an acid or a base. It's called amphoteric. Any substance that can act as an acid or a base. When does it act as a base? When it's in the presence of an acid. When does it act like an acid? When it's in the presence of a base. Okay? So, let's take a look at what happens with um, weak bases and Bronsted-Lowry uh, bases. See what's going on here. We've got ammonia. It's acting as the base because we know that it's going to accept a proton from water, right? So once I now accept that proton, I become conjugate acid. 
water loses its proton, water is acting as the acid, it loses its proton, and OH now is the conjugate base. So what are our conjugate acid-base pairs? We've got NH3, NH4, and we've got H2O and O minus. What can we say about conjugate acid-base pairs? There's something really important to notice here. Let's look at our HCl and Cl. What's the difference between HCl and Cl? One hydrogen. What's the difference between H2O and H3O? One hydrogen. What's the difference between H3PO4 and H2PO4 minus? One hydrogen. Last look. NH3 and NH4, what's the difference between them? One hydrogen. So what's the difference between a conjugate acid base pair? One hydrogen difference. The one that has the, more, the most hydrogens is considered the acid. The one with the fewer hydrogens is the conjugate base, right? If it's a base, it has fewer acids and its conjugate acid has one more hydrogen. All right. Let's practice uh, determining the conjugate acid base pairs. First, we have to finish um, doing our equation, and then we can pick our hydrogen, or we can pick our conjugate, conjugate base pairs. So remember, an acid has a hydrogen to give. So is the acid the HNO3 or the OH minus? Well, OH minus is a polyatomic ion. It cannot get rid of its hydrogen. So the only thing that has a hydrogen to give is the nitric acid. So it's going to donate its acid. We end up with NO3 minus plus water. So let's identify our acid and bases. Well, we know HNO3 was the acid. It donated its hydrogen, so NO3 now is the conjugate base. And hydroxide, since HNO3 was the acid, then hydroxide must be the base. And hydroxide, for you to remember, is one of the strongest bases. I'm not going to say the strongest because there are some that are stronger. But for our purposes in this course, hydroxide acid, hydroxide ion is the strongest or a strong. And being that it gained a hydrogen, it now becomes the conjugate acid. Okay? Let's take a look at the next example. This one is a little tricky, and maybe if we draw the Lewis structure, you can figure out who has the hydrogen to donate. Let's draw this quickly. Notice that this molecule doesn't want to give up a hydrogen. It actually has room to take on a proton, right? Because it's got a lone pair of electrons. So this guy, notice that if you have a nitrogen that's got a lone pair of electrons, it is considered a base, okay? If you've got a nitrogen that's completely full, it has all of its bonds possible, then you have an acid, something to remember. So water is going to donate its hydrogen, and we're going to end up here with CH3, NH3+, plus, and OH-. minus. Notice that our hydroxide is formed, that this is a base. And if I was to draw this compound... Notice that the, the nitrogen is completely saturated. It's full. It's got all of its bonds possible. 
So now we can actually donate that hydrogen in a later situation. And since this is a weak base, I'll put a reverse arrow. So we've got a base plus water, which is our acid. And since this base gained a hydrogen or a proton, we're gonna call this the conjugate acid. And hydroxide is always gonna be the conjugate base of water. All right, our last problem. How about you try the last problem? And I'll come back and give you the answer. So hydroxide ion is always going to be a base. It is going to accept the proton from HPO42 minus. Once it does so, its conjugate acid becomes water. And the conjugate base of HPO42 minus is PO43 minus. What I want you to notice is the change in charge as I go from an acid to base. Notice that here with HNO3, when I lose a hydrogen, I gain a negative charge, so I'll lose a charge. When I, like this base here, when I gain a hydrogen, I gain a plus charge, so my charge goes up. So when you lose a hydrogen, charge goes down. Gain a hydrogen, charge goes up. Depending on how many hydrogens, you lose one hydrogen, you go down one. You lose two hydrogens, you go down two. You lose three, go down three. All right? 